Hello everybody, welcome to the lesson 44 notes video. This lesson is all about a new type of sequence called a geometric sequence. And similar to what we were doing in lesson 43 with an arithmetic sequence, a geometric sequence is a specific type of sequence that will follow a certain pattern and have a structured way that we can write recursive and explicit formulas. Um, arithmetic sequences, we were adding or subtracting that same common difference in each term. A geometric sequence is a little bit different. So we're going to start off with a video of something I'm sure you've seen before, a tennis ball bouncing, and we're going to use that to help us write and think about what a geometric sequence is. So here is a video that I'm just going to play from my phone under the camera. Okay, so what we saw there was a tennis ball being dropped from a certain height, and each time it bounces, the height of the bounce is getting smaller. Um, it gives us some numbers here. We're going to use these numbers to represent what we just saw in that video. So that it was originally dropped from a height of 286 centimeters, and then each time it bounced, it bounced back to these heights, so 157 then 86 centimeters, then 47, then 26. So we want to think about what happened to the height of the ball. Like what is a pattern or a rule that the rebound height of that tennis ball was following. Um, let's draw it out. So if we were to make a little diagram to represent this. So maybe it started off up here. That was at the height of 286 centimeters. And then, and I'm going to draw it out even though it's kind of vertical, so then it bounced, and then now bounced up back to a height of 157. Bounced again, now this time went to 86, so that would be probably a little more than halfway there. Okay, now it went to 47. and then finally 26. So if this were oops, our tennis ball bouncing, each time it rebounds to this specified height. So if we want to find a pattern for this sequence, then we want to figure out how is the height changing each time. So maybe take a minute, pause this video, make some observations, try and make a prediction. What is happening to the rebound height of this tennis ball? Okay, if you paused, maybe you're back now. If you didn't pause, let's think about some options. If we were thinking about it like an arithmetic series, we want to figure out, is there a certain common difference between these numbers? And let's look. So between the first height of 100 or 286 and 157, it went down 129 centimeters. But then with the next one, 157 minus 86, that one only went down 71. So there's not a common difference between our bounces. Um, but what I observe from this graph is that each time it bounces, it's about half, maybe a little more than half of the previous height. And if we follow this pattern, it kind of looks like maybe like an exponential graph from our exponential unit. Like each time it's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller and then kind of starts to level out. If we were to keep bouncing, it would just stop. It would hit the ground. So if we look at it this way, it starts at 286. This first bounce is 157. So out of our original 286, it bounced up to about 54.9% of its height. So this one was about 54.9% of that last height. The next time, so it goes to 86 centimeters, and if it started that 
previous time at 157, that one is also about 54.8% of its previous height. And then 47 out of that previous 86 is about 54.6 or 54.7. And then 26 out of 47 is also about 55.3%. So this situation isn't perfect because we have some energy loss in that tennis ball, but about 54, 55 percent of the previous height is that new height of the tennis ball. So to get from here to here, we aren't adding or subtracting a common difference, but we're actually multiplying by a certain ratio. So each one, we take 186, or sorry, 286, multiply by that percentage, 0.549, then multiply by this percentage, and we keep getting that common ratio um, until it eventually levels out to zero. So that is what a geometric sequence really is. A sequence where instead of adding or subtracting a common difference, we're multiplying by a common factor. Um, that common factor we also can call a common ratio. And so the ratio, or just that um, if we divide the two terms, that will give us that ratio between consecutive terms. So in a geometric sequence, we're going to have a common ratio if we divide the two terms rather than a common difference when we subtract them. We can write some recursive and explicit formulas for geometric sequences. So same thing as in arithmetic, when we write a recursive formula, we want to specify what that first term is because um, when we find our later term, so any term, a subscript n, will be that previous term, whatever n, a sub n minus 1 is, times that common ratio. Also, we're, u we're using lowercase r to represent that common ratio. So whatever the previous term is, like for example, if our previous term is 157, we multiply by that common ratio, then we get our next term, 86. So in that um, recursive formula, it'll always follow that same pattern. For an explicit formula, we have um, our new term is our first term times that ratio to the power of n minus 1. Because if we think in a sequence, we're just going to keep multiplying by that same ratio over and over again. So by the time we get to this like fourth term, we've multiplied by that ratio one, two, three times, or that ratio cubed. So that's why we're multiplying by the ratio to the power of whatever that n minus one value is. So let's do some examples of figuring out is a sequence geometric? And if so, we will write the recursive and explicit formulas. Also there's a little typo here that is supposed to say write, like write the formulas. So first, we have the sequence, 5, 15, 45, 135, continuing on that pattern. And we want to think, is there something common that we're multiplying or dividing by? And in this case, it looks like 5 to 15 would be multiplying by 3. 15 to 45 would be multiplying by 3. 45 to 135, we can check that is multiplying by 3. So we have this common ratio, or r, of 3. Each time we're multiplying by 3. So to write a recursive formula, we're following this pattern, where we can first state our initial, our first value, so our a1 value is 5, and then any subsequent value, so any a to the, or any sub a subscript n is going to be whatever the previous term is, a n minus 1, times that common ratio, so times 5. So there's a recursive formula to describe this sequence. And then an explicit formula
will always follow this pattern up here where any term a sub n is the first term times the common ratio to the power of n minus 1. So if we're looking for the explicit formula for this sequence, it would be our first term, 5, times our common ratio, which is 3. Oh, also, sorry, this should be 3. I don't know why I put 5. I was thinking of the first term right there. So this common ratio in the recursive formula whoops, should be 3. So our first term is 5, and then our common ratio is 3 to the power of n minus 1. So here is our explicit formula for this sequence. So if we plug in any term to an explicit formula, it'll give us that term number. So say we were looking for the fourth term, 5 times 3 to the power of 4 minus 1. 135, and that does give us that fourth term. Okay, let's do another example. So in this one, we're looking um, to find out is this a geometric sequence, and if so, we'll write the formulas. This one might not be as easy to tell what that common ratio is, so going from 8 to 1.6 to 0.32, um, this one was easier to tell because we can easily see like times 3 times 3 times 3. But if you don't know or you can't tell, then you can always just divide one term by that previous term to figure out what that ratio is. So like 1.6 divided by 8 is 0 0.2. 0 0.32 divided by 1.6. is also 0.2 and then if we tested that last one 0 0.064 divided by 0.32 also 0.2 so in this one we have a common ratio each time we're multiplying by 0.2 so we do have a geometric sequence here this time like our ball bounce it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. This time it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, either way, we still are multiplying by some common ratio. So we have our ratio, which we said is 0 0.2. We know our first term, which is 8. So we have everything we need to write a recursive and explicit model. So for recursive, we always want to state that first term, which is 8, and then any later term, a sub n, will be that previous term times the common ratio, which is 0.2, 20%, and then an explicit model. We need that first term times our common ratio to the power of n minus 1. So our any term, a sub n, will be our first term, 8, times our common ratio, 0 0.2, to the n minus 1 power. Okay. We can use our formulas to find any term. So like any nth term in a sequence, we can either find that recursively or explicitly depending on the given information. In this one, so we're looking for the 17th term of this sequence, 11, 33, 99, 297. And 17, it's kind of far away, so let's find this one explicitly. So let's write an explicit model that we can just plug in 17 for n and find that term. So if we are writing an explicit model, we need that first term, and we need that common ratio. So let's figure out what that ratio is. So to get from 11 to 33, 
what are we multiplying by? Um, if we divided that to figure it out, it would be times 3 to get from 11 to 33. Same thing, to get from 33 to 99, we're multiplying by 3. And same thing to get from 99 to 297. So that is our common ratio. We have our first term, 11, that's our a sub 1 value. So we have those two things. We can write an explicit model. So a sub n is our first term, 11, times our common ratio to the n minus 1 power. So if we're looking for the 17th term, that means 17 is the n that we're using. So a subscript 17 is 11 times 3 to the 17 minus 1 power, or the 16th power. So the 17th term is 11 times 3 to the 16, which is this huge number. Let's get that so it looks like 473,513,930 million five hundred thirteen thousand nine hundred thirty one. So this is a very large number. But if we think about it, if we're multiplying by three every time, then these are going to start um, getting bigger very quickly because we already have we already started with eleven in only four terms. We're at two ninety seven. Multiply this by three, we'll be at almost nine hundred. So this is going to keep getting bigger very rapidly. Okay. We can also use a recursive method, similar to what we did in Lesson 43, to find the term number if we don't know the first term. So this one is asking us to find the 19th term we know the 21st term is 4,050. We know the common ratio is 1 fifth. And we don't know the first term, so we can't write an explicit model. But 19 and 21 are not that far away, so we can just use that common ratio to find the, 20, or the 19th term recursively. So I'll do the same thing like I was doing in the previous lesson, where we're looking for this 19th term. So I'll use a placeholder so we can figure out what that 20th term is. We know what the 21st term is, 4,050. And then this pattern would continue on forever. So our ratio is if we're going forward in the sequence. So to get from 4,050 to the next term, we'd have to multiply by a fifth. So that would actually give us eight hundred and ten. So if we're going backwards, multiplying by one fifth is the reverse, so going backwards, of multiplying by five. So if we're going from 810 to 4050, we actually have to multiply by 5 and get that, um, that number. So if we're going in the reverse direction, it's like taking the reciprocal, multiplying by the reciprocal of whatever our common ratio is. So let's go recursively back, starting at 4050. Multiply by the reciprocal of 1 fifth, so multiply by 5. And that gives us this 20th term is 20,250. Multiplying by 5 again will give us that 19th term, which is 101,250. So the question it's asking is, what is this 19th term, which we just found, is 101,250. The last concept in our geometric series lesson is the geometric mean. 
So in our last lesson, we did the arithmetic mean, which was just the average between two numbers. Um, in an arithmetic sequence, they're the same distance away, so taking that arithmetic mean is just finding the average between two numbers, um, similar to what we have done in seeing the word mean in the past. Geometric mean is a little bit different, because each term in the sequence is not the same distance away. So we can't just take the average between the two numbers, we can't just add them up and divide by two, because that would give us the number directly in the middle. But since we have a ratio and not a common difference, it's not going to be equal distance away. So here is our equation for the geometric mean, um, the term between two terms in a geometric sequence, and looking for any missing term, a sub n, we can take the square root of that previous term, the whatever term is before it, and whatever term is after it. Um, I'm going to make a separate video, so right after this, if you are interested in seeing the proof of this formula, so why this formula works, it'll be a short video um, post after this, you do not have to watch it. But using this equation, we can find missing terms in a geometric sequence. So if that geometric mean, any missing term, a sub n, is the square root of the previous term times the next term, then if we're looking for this one here, that would be the square root of that previous term, negative 6, times the next term, negative 216. So in this case, we're looking for negative 6 times negative 216, which is the square root of 1,296. Which is 36. Um, however, something to keep in mind for a geometric sequence is our common ratio might be positive or negative. So the square root of 1,296 could be 36, or it could be negative 36. And if we had a common ratio here, so if this were 36 or negative 36, we'd have a common ratio of either 6 or minus 6. And so say if our ratio was positive 6, then negative 6 times 6 would give us negative 36, times 6 would give us negative 216. If we had a negative ratio, so an r value that was negative, then negative 6 times negative 6 would give us positive 36, but positive 36 times negative 6 would give us this negative 216. So if we have a negative r value, then the signs in our sequence are going to alternate from negative to positive, negative, positive. So this was that missing term, that geometric mean. And then one more, if we are looking for the missing term in this sequence, we can find the arithmetic, sorry, I meant geometric mean of these two terms. So that square root of the previous term times the next term. So the square root of 5 times this next term, 2.8125. So that would be the square root of 14.0625, which is 3.75. So again, the square root might be positive or negative, because if we have a negative r value, then this would start positive, alternate to negative, multiplying by a negative would give us back to a positive. So this might be positive or negative, 3.75. Make sure you get some practice using geometric series on the worksheet, and email me if you have any questions.